all these Neptune's beats are going through my head and I'm hearing in those beats the same sort of um, weightlessness that he's describing in term in the first verse about being like a balloon floating off into the air. It's Micah. Welcome to our Monday Reaction Series where we are uh, going through the number one songs of each calendar year starting from the present and working our way back. Uh, we have started with 2023 a few weeks back and we're now, we've are now we now covered an entire decade. We're back to 2014 and the number one song of that year, as I consult my notes to make sure I'm in the right year, the number one song of 2014 10 years ago was Happy by Pharrell Williams. Happy is one of those songs that when it was when it came out it makes you wonder why did this song not already exist? I'm sure there was a lot of confusion when the song came out from people who thought that this was somehow a remake of some song that they had forgotten from the from the 50s or the 60s. Um, it's it has a, a throwback vibe uh, but it also seems uh, current. It seemed current then. It still seems current now. It's just it's one of those songs that has this odd, um, timeless, you know. And I don't use the word timeless a lot because I think that, you know, we we tend to get trapped in our um, in our limited time span. Uh, I don't think we can really call things timeless. And this is a speech I give every time I say it. Um, we can't really call something timeless until you know. I mean, we need to leave, at least give it 200 years before we can really talk about something being timeless. But uh, in the in the realm of, you know, the generational turnover and the way music sounds and the and fads that come in and out, this song has kind of that, that timeless energy to it, and it's got a great melody. Um, with songs like these, when I react to them, it's really all about seeing if I can pick up anything new that I haven't heard before because I am familiar with the song. The v the video on YouTube has 1.2 billion to 1.2 billion views, so it's familiar to a lot of people. Uh, it was the biggest song of 2014. It was one of the biggest years of the past decade of the 21st century. Ridiculous amount of success, and um, you know. I don't anticipate that I'll have anything different to say about the song that anyone else has ever said. But these are the rules. I react to these number one songs of the year, and so I'm going to sit through this and I'm going to pretend like I've never heard it before. Uh, and I invite you to do the same. Let's get started and watch Happy. What is there to say about this song? Some people, this song drives up the wall because it's about being happy and we're not supposed to have unambivalent feelings of joy in a song we're so beyond that we're way too sophisticated as a culture to have songs that are just celebratory um, that are just about saying hey choose to be happy and it is of course it is also fair to say that this song doesn't is not in any way a statement about mental illness or depression or anything like that but um, I, I get the the um, blowback that the song a song like this can can uh, can engender because a lot of people are unhappy and they don't want to feel <laughs> excluded I guess um, you know and sometimes it's not as simple as just choosing happiness and I don't think that this the song is making a statement about that this song is about encouraging people to take that view and um, you know I don't know what sort of literature there is about the impact of this song uh, I've heard you know I've heard secondhand I've heard how this song has positively impacted people's lives because they get the message of it it really that they internalize the message of it and it really 
helps turn their life around. Um, Pharrell Williams is is kind of like a real life Elmo, and I feel like he always has been. Um, now I know Pharrell from way back in the '90s. I remember his group Nerd, and there there was some pretty uh, seedy. <laughs> music videos and songs going on with them because they were they were a rap group and they were not not for children not for not targeting the same audience as this song was with the uh, you know soundtracking the the minions movie uh, so i know that he's not all about sunshine and and light and joy but I do, but there is, but there's a certain whimsy about how he approaches even the most uh, adult of topics that is definitely a, a through line in his career. And his, I think his production, I think Pharrell's production has, uh, with the Neptunes, has always had this sense of whimsy to it that makes it uh, hard to resist. Um, songs like and, and I've got these songs playing in my head right now like the Britney Spears song I'm a slave for you uh, like um, the Jay-Z song um, the dun, 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 that song uh, I can't remember the the name of it but um, but all these all these Neptune's beats are going through my head and I'm hearing in those beats the same sort of um, weightlessness that he's describing in term in the first verse about being like a balloon floating off into the air uh, or however he puts it uh, and so this the song to some degree I guess distills what's been going on in his music for a very long time um, so I mean I don't know maybe that's a new insight that someone hasn't come up with before I'd be very surprised if no one had made, made that connection before but that's you know that that's what I'm hearing here. I think that Pharrell has always been an offbeat person with a very unique way of hearing things and reacting to things, and it's good when someone can channel that into something so mainstream and it really connects with a lot of people. I think that's um, there's certain times when people who are by all rights and means complete outsiders. Uh, connect in a very mainstream way with the public I think say like first thing that comes to mind is Purple Rain like when Prince connected with the popular imagination uh, in 1984 with with Purple Rain at that point he stopped being this this weird musical prodigy kid that wore high heels and he, and he became like a rock a legitimate rock and roll mainstream rock and roll star um, and the quirkiness kind of melts away when you establish that connection but in order to really get people's attention a lot of time you have to be different to start with so it's 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 just interesting when people go from one part of their careers to another part of their careers and they end up being so well accepted so those are a few of my thoughts so far uh, let's let's get into we've already been through two verses let's get into the breakdown of the song i think that's where we are I'm sure I think I'm I think I've heard this many times before but I'm going to just say it again as a as a as a grammar and English nerd rooms never have roofs they have ceilings so structures have roof roofs on the outside of them um, is that his point like I don't know is that like is it one of those things where where like Alanis Morissette meant for ironic as a title to be ironic because if she wasn't really talking about irony is he is he doing something similar here or did is this, it was just he just blurred out this uh this lyric in one one songwriting session and didn't you know didn't proofread the the the, the imagery when he was uh, writing it down I don't know if, if you know if, the, if there is documentation of of whether this was an accident or uh, was purposeful, please drop it in the comments. For the 1.2 billionth and one th first time, uh, that was Happy by Pharrell Williams. What's brilliant about that song is that I is that it's very difficult to 
pull apart the song and talk about its various components because it's such a well integrated song it is um like you know you, you can't really talk about the arrangement of the song the instrumentation the vocals because they're so tightly interwoven with each other it's such a focused record um and i think that's part of the reason like it's almost like a it's almost like mainlining music. It's like this music does not, you don't have, you don't digest the song. It literally absorbs into your brain, like whole. Like I'm sure that there, that musicians who um, analyze music or, or critics who analyze music for a living can, can, you know, break this down pretty handily into its musical components and talk about what it's doing. But uh, for most of us casual listeners, it's one of those things where it just sort of goes right into your head and becomes uh, not just an ear warm, but like an entire head warm. Uh, and I think that's key to its success. I also think that while this song did receive its fair, of, uh, fair share of grief in the same way that uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy from the 80s by Bobby McFerrin, uh, got grief at the time i think there is a key distinction here i think happy succeeds on a different level because it's inviting you to be happy it's telling you to clap along if you feel this way it's in that way it's inclusive it's an invitation uh whereas don't worry be happy is uh if you just take the the title it's sort of a it's an admonition. It's it's sort of an it's a uh, it's instructions, and it's specifically telling you not to worry. And um, I mean that might be reading way too much into the lyrics, but to me I think that's probably the insulting part about it, uh, that people know that there are things that are going on in the world that we probably should be worried about, and just going into la la land and just being happy and not addressing the problems is not really an option. There's, you know, whereas Pharrell's song is, is, is plainly on one side of that coin of being happy, but it's, but it doesn't reject the notion that there aren't things to worry about. It's, uh, it's just, just inviting people to spend some time on the other side of the coin. So to me, this song has never come across as cloying in the way that some other feel good songs do. But it definitely overstayed its welcome because it was just everywhere. And it just became, it was the excess of it. It wasn't anything, there wasn't anything inherently wrong about the song. It was just so everywhere all the time, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but now with that distance uh, between us and when the song was such a phenomenon, I think it can be reappreciated as the great record that it was. Um, so... If there's a song that ever would get my stamp of approval for number one song of the year, this would be it because this is a universal song. It's a it's it's a um, it's a well written song. It's like I said, it's one of those songs that just goes straight into your head. Um, there's no reason why the, a, the why a song like this shouldn't be uh, the biggest hit uh, of an entire year, and that it was in 2014. All right, next Monday we'll be looking at the number one song of 2013, and that would be huh, another happy song, Thrift Store by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Um, so we're, we're, definitely, um, we're definitely in an era of happy number one songs. The number one song we, we reacted to last week was Uptown Funk, uh, which is relentlessly good-natured as well, and then and then thrift shop uh, thrift store is uh also very upbeat um as we get into the early 2010s it's a little more somber a little more um anxiety ridden but um for now we're on a we're on a happy high and uh, i'll leave you on that and while you're happy uh while i've got you in a good mood or while more uh, appropriately while pharrell pharrell has you in a good mood um be sure and like the video if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined and please help me to make music 